So working towards getting some decent music output from a 6502 based homebrew computer. In the last video we built a digital frequency divider system to divide down a 1.84 MHz clock signal into various frequencies in the audio range in a way that will be configurable and controllable from a 6502 based homebrew computer. At the end of the last video we had one channel of oscillator set up here but we hadn't actually plugged it into a speaker yet so we're going to get straight on and do that now. So in a previous video I showed these piezo buzzers and I explained the difference between active and passive piezo buzzers. And in a nutshell, the passive buzzers require an external circuit to make them buzz, whereas the active buzzers have one built in. And that previous video was about using the active ones for, so that we'd have a minimal circuit to drive it. In this case, though, we've just built a whole oscillator circuit, so we don't need an active one. We want a passive one, which will oscillate at the frequency we want it to, rather than the frequency that's built into it. So this is a passive piezo buzzer. And to start with, I'm going to hook that up, and you're going to listen to the sound coming out of that circuit. That's going to ground, and all I'm going to do here is take the output of the flip-flop and wire it straight into the buzzer. So as we have two counters here, the one on the left and the one on the right, I'm going to designate the one on the left as being an octave divider. It's always going to divide by a power of two. And the one on the right is going to be responsible for tuning to specific notes within the octave. Um, and I've already actually configured the one on the left in the fashion I need it to be. As you can see, it's currently con configured to seven and when you add 1 to that to get the divide, that, that, that'll then be a divide by 8. In order for this to be constantly dividing by powers of 2, all I need to do is set all of the, bin, all of the pins from 1 upwards to be on up to a certain point. So for example, that was showing, I think it was 477 hertz when I turned that on just now. If I set one more of these high, it will divide by 2 one more time and it should show around 240, slightly under 240. And that will have the effect of, of shifting the pitch of the tone down one octave. And we can see how high we can go as well. If I put out a few more of these, I'm going to set as many of these low as I can. I have to leave the last one high. The way I'm using these down counters, it's important that I never set them to zero. If, they, if I set them to zero, their output pin will just stay low all the time and we won't get any oscillation out of them. We won't get any, any, any rising edges on that output pin. So there we go. This should be the highest frequency that we can do with the configuration of the right one as it is. So we're getting 1.91 kilohertz there. We, we, we do still have the option of configuring the one on the right to a lower number to, to, get, a, to get a higher frequency out. In general I'm always going to have the high bit f of the tuning down counter set, set to 1. So I'm going to set that to 128 now, and we'll see what that sounds like. So as you can see, that's pretty much doubled the frequency. We're up to 3.5 kilohertz now. And in terms of just showing how we can go higher from here, if I do set that to 64 instead of 128, it will double the frequency again. It's not quite double because I'm not doing the adding one in my head here, but it'll be about double again, so we should expect about 7 kilohertz now. And there you go, 7.1 kilohertz. So uh, you can see we get a very good range there in, in, in terms of high frequencies. Let's see, how, see, let's see what the lowest ones sound like now. So I'm going to put this back to 128. I'll turn the sound on, I won't be able to talk over it, but I'll turn the sound on and then I'll progressively add more and more octaves so you can hear the sound going down and down in pitch. So that's 3.6 kilohertz. 
1.8 that's about 900-ish, 156 246 211 56 and the lowest of all so that's now on 28 27.9 hertz so how can we use this to actually play tuned music? The main standard for musical tuning is for the note A above middle C to be 440 hertz. I've got this currently set on the right hand side to the lowest number that I want to set it to for properly tuned notes and that's equivalent to the highest pitch that I can produce within a particular octave. So as I add more ones to that number pitch is going to come down. So what I want to do is use the octave selector on the left, configure it to a frequency where the frequency in Hertz is above 440, and then I can start playing with the one on the right to get that down to 440 Hertz. So we're starting from our 28 Hertz, we're going to have to come up quite a few octaves from here. So now we're above the 440 hertz, so now I want to start turning on additional bits on the right hand side until I can get that as close as I can to 440. I'll, I'll start with the highest bits first. That's too low. Put it back. Still too low, still too low, still too low, still too low, We're getting there though, still a little bit too low, okay so that's not low enough now, so I think 439.6 is as close as we can get with an 8 bit divider there with an octave on the left, and again we can shift that a, a note up and down an uh, entire octave at a time simply by changing the, 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 the settings over here. I hope that makes sense. Finally, I'll just quickly show you how you can hook that up to some headphones or an amplified speaker set. Uh, what I'm going to do for now is rely on the headphones to not require significant amplification uh, and speak and these speakers I'm using here are also have built-in amplifiers so they don't need the circuit to provide a lot of power. It is quite simple. So the signal that's coming that's coming out of here at the moment and driving the piezo the buzzer is approximately a five volt peak to peak wave. I'll take the buzzer out. So if I connect this here, um, this takes a three and a half mil jack input and just converts it to a nice three pin plug here with ground in the middle. I can't send a five volt peak to peak wave to these speakers, it's way too high. Down a headphone cable you probably want to be sending, you know, about a hundredth of that to be honest. Um, maybe, maybe about 50 millivolts peak to peak. You really don't want to be sending much down here because you will blow up your equipment if you do. Um, so or at least start low. So this is a 100 ohm resistor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire the center ground here to the left hand speaker wire here. I don't know which speaker's which, I don't really mind. I'm only going to wire one of them up here. And on the other side of that, I would like to put 10K. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to wire that 10K up to the output of the circuit. Finally, I need to 
connect the ground wire from the speakers to the ground for the circuit. Um, this is not the right way to do it. The waveform that we're sending to it um, is alternating between 0 and 5 and the, the ground ought to be the average for this kind of AC signal. So we're actually sending it some DC here which is it's not, it's not really going to want to have. It won't do any harm though. So let's see how that sounds on a speaker. So as you can hear that sounded pretty good. Um, it's a slightly softer sound than I was getting out of the piezo buzzer but it's still a square wave sound so it's still got quite a lot of those high harmonics in it. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun when we start making filters to go on top of this and you know maybe maybe, maybe we can even offer the 6502 some control over the waveforms to get to a lot of sort of software control over the sound. And I'm hoping that we're going to get a really synthy feel out of it in the end once we get all of that stuff working. But that's all for this video. In the next one I will show how to connect this circuit up to the 6502. If you enjoyed this video please hit like and let me know in the comments below. And especially if you decide to have a go at building this yourself I'd love to hear about that. And if you're interested in the next part where we start to hook this up to the 6502 computer please do subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you get notified when that video is ready. Until then good luck if you're building this yourselves and I'll see you next time.